Good morning, good afternoon, everyone, to OnPoint Technologies PCM and Mac Mall webinars Wednesday. Day. We are thrilled to have you with us for today's webinar, which is Cisco Security Next Generations Firewall Overview and Update. And to present this topic, we have got John Hopkins, who is Director of Global Sales. We'll be leading right into our main presentation, but before that, I've got a few housekeeping items. Please remember to enter your question in the question box on your right-hand side and I'll relay those to our main speaker at the end of the presentation. We do send out a survey at the end of the webinar. Please fill it out and let us know how we did, as well as topics you'd like to see covered in the future. Speaking of future webinars, please be sure to check out our website on www.onpoint.com slash webinars and also on www.pcm.com slash webinars. We are also recording this session, which will be available for playback in the next few days. Recordings are posted to our webinar archive page, which is www.onpoint.com slash webinar slash archive and also on pcm.com slash webinar slash archive. And with that, I'm happy to hand it off to our main speaker for today, John Hopkins, who is Global Sales, uh, Director Global Sales. John, you're on now. Yes. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Again, my name is John Hopkins, Director of Global Sales uh, at Cisco, focused on network security and uh, NG firewall, next-gen firewall and next-gen uh, IPS. The agenda I've put together for you today uh, is as follows. I'll start uh, at a high level, talk about security enabling digitization, uh, some of the challenges with that, what the industry as well as Cisco is doing to respond. Um, I'll give you a good overview on Cisco's security strategy overall, how the next-gen firewall fits within that. Um, I'm also going to touch on ransomware, since that's a really hot topic, as many of you are aware, uh, over the last few weeks, especially with the WannaCry ransomware. Uh, once we're done with that, kind of setting the table, if you will, as well as talking about uh, Cisco's NGFW's role in that, uh, we'll dig into the next-gen firewall, um, talk a little bit about previous generations versus current, um, some of the unique differentiators that we bring to the market, uh, the innovations, and then have some time at the end for question and answer. So with that, I'll go ahead and get started. Um, from a security perspective, you know, one of the biggest things we're doing as an industry is, is really facilitating and trying to enable digitization. It's really what I would call a mega trend in the market today, and it's happening in every single industry segment, be that healthcare, government, you know, technology, manufacturing, hospitality, retail, et cetera, et cetera. And really what it's doing is it's offering a complete shift and a change in business models. And as you can see from the statistics here, 50 billion devices connected by 2020 and a $19 trillion opportunity. There's a lot of money to be made uh, for those uh, companies and individuals that are able to take advantage of this. Now the flip side of that is the adversaries, the bad guys, if you will, have also seen that they're, for them, there's also gold at the end of the proverbial rainbow. And really what they've quickly determined is I have a really large attack surface now with all of those devices connected. And uh, what they've also done, because they figured out how to monetize now, um, you know, the, the threat landscape, if you will, is the attacks have become much more sophisticated. And then the industry itself, you know, there's a tremendous amount of uh, VC funding and capital going into uh, um, stopping the bad guys, if you will, the good guy side of the equation. And, uh, you know, the challenge with that for companies and for individuals um, like yourselves on the call is that many of those are not oper interoperable uh, and they really weren't designed to work together and, and they're not open. So we're having this massive shift and move toward digitization, this really dynamic threat landscape that's very well funded and very sophisticated, you know, with an increasing level of complexity from the customer perspective. You know, so what I'll show next is, it, you know, clearly illustrates the, the challenge of the matter uh, and what the impact is for companies. So from, a, um, you know, what's the, what the graph on the left shows is, is what happens is as we continue to add um, security solutions, products, vendors to our environment, the complexity goes up. Now, the downside of that is, is as we continue to add, the capabilities curve essentially flattens out. And, and really what that eventually creates is a, high complexity and, you know, um, decreasing capabilities to add more and more and more. Uh, and it creates a security gap. Um, what our customers are telling us is this just a tremendous amount of information coming at them 
and eventually it just becomes noise. And what you see on the right is that 54% of legitimate security alerts are not remediated due to the lack of integrated systems. I may have lots of products, lots of vendors, lots of solutions, got lots of data coming at me, but I'm not actually sure what to act on, how to act on it, when to act on it, et cetera. So a lot of the legitimate threats are going by unremediated. And the industry average is about 100 days from, you know, by the time you detect a threat that was initially unknown as it enters into an environment. So, you know, oftentimes, uh, you know, again, this is not a, a great set of equations, clearly. And what at Cisco we decided was it was time for a different approach. So what I wanted to cover quickly with you now is, you know, our strategy in a nutshell. Um, so starting kind of in the middle where the, the large circles are, where you see endpoint, network, and cloud, really what we've tried to do is take a best-of-breed security portfolio approach with an integrated architecture and, and really merge those together. And if we're able to leverage the capabilities of the endpoint, the network, and the cloud together, tie them together, and actually have true integrations um, that are pre-done for customers, it creates a force multiplier, if you will, so that we can help address what we saw as a significant problem on the, on the first couple of slides. So sitting on top of you know, endpoint network and cloud is, is threat intelligence. Uh, our brand name for that is Talos. And if you want to really boil that down into its simplest form, what threat intelligence ultimately provides to you is a list of things that you need to block. Right? So, you know, and there's a lot of sophistication that goes into that, as you might imagine. We have one of the largest security uh, organizations in the world uh, dedicated on threat intelligence. Um, typically, a 10 to 100 times what our com competitors in this space offer. And, and really what we do is take the best of human intelligence, you know, uh, threat feed, uh, threat feeds out on the Internet, as, as well as machine learning, and combine that all together so that we can tell you what to block and also so that you can automate. So that threat intelligence we don't just keep. We push that on an ongoing basis and a bidirectional basis out to our products and services uh, globally. Uh, and then ultimately um, that ties together in what we call integrated threat defense. And what this enables for is better protection to simplify your security uh, overall to address that complexity gap, that security effectiveness gap that I showed previously. And then we underpin that with services, uh, either direct from Cisco or through our partners like PCM and others, that provides you the capability to either de-risk your deployment in your environment or simply to accelerate the time to value, free up your resources for other products. So really, what we've developed, and this is essentially our, our, our marketing slogan, if you will, is you know we have, again, the best of breed portfolio, best of breed products with an integrated architecture, because at the end of the day, no one really asked to buy an architecture. They just expect and want the stuff to work together, but the products absolutely have to be best of breed. And if we can do that in a simple, open, and automated fashion, well, that leads to effective security. So what I wanted to do next, just because it's so top of mind and there's practically no customer meeting that I go to these days that ransomware doesn't come up. So I'll just spend a few minutes talking about uh, ransomware in general. I'll sketch out how it works and then I'll talk to you and show you specifically how that integrated architecture helps customers to solve that. I'll talk about NGFW's role before we actually transition more into a deeper dive on, on the NGFW. So first and foremost, uh, you know, what's the problem with ransomware? Ultimately, you know, customers can be taken hostage, if you will, um, allowing the bad threat actors, the bad guys, if you will, to lock up your critical resources and demand payment uh, if you want access to said resources. Now, we've seen some pretty cat catastrophic um, results from this. There have been some very high-profile hospitals. Uh, that have lost the ability to give you know real-time care. We've seen public safety not being able to respond to 911. We've seen financial services and banking offline. You know retail not being able to process payments, etc. So it's a very large problem. Um, you know, it, in fact, you know it's the most profitable type of malware to date. It's estimated to be a one billion dollar. That's with a B um, business from a from the bad guys perspective. And there's no shortage of examples of ransomware. Uh, Angler was probably the, the big one uh, from, from last year, if you will, six months or so ago. Uh, the latest is WannaCry, uh, which came out a few weeks ago in earnest. Um, so let me just talk quickly about what a ransomware infection does, how it comes in, and you know how it essentially locks up those resources. Then we'll talk about specifically you know, how we stop that um, through the approach that I just mentioned. So 
often we talk about infection vectors. In other words, how does the ransomware typically get into an environment? The two largest ones are web and email. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Um, but once it's into the system, if you will, there's a C2 stands for command and control communications and an asymmetric key exchange that goes on, essentially allowing ransomware to take control of the system. And once they do have control, this is where the encryption of the files and essentially uh, the company is held hostage. And then the owner of the company would have to pay a ransom, if you will, often in the form of bitcoins to get access back to your systems. So it's a new modern uh, way of extortion, if you want to think of it from that perspective. So WannaCry, uh, again, really huge in the news. What I thought would be helpful is I'll walk through a quick infographic that came from our uh, Cisco.com website from our organization, Talos, that just walks you through the timeline. I think what you'll clearly see quickly is the value of that threat intelligence that I talked about, that industry-leading threat intelligence. So uh, essentially, the WannaCry uh, is a, a vulnerability. Uh, in the Microsoft, uh, you know, operating systems, and it was um, the vulnerability was allowed announced in a security bulletin on March 14th. That same day, the Cisco NGFWs uh, received their signature updates so that they could stop um, the uh, the attacks, uh, even if you have um, unpatched systems. Uh, then, what changed from that point, and again, about a month's time went by. Then the shadow brokers, a group known as the shadow brokers, released a set of vulnerabilities. Um, that were allegedly sourced from the NSA. Again, lots of news. I'm sure many of you are very, very familiar with this. Um, you, you know, so we further uh, updated our signatures as well. Uh, and then when everything kind of went live, if you will, uh, in mass globally was on May the 12th. And uh, you know, we saw that in our cloud systems, which we call Umbrella. Um, so, and you know, we were able to essentially push a kill switch to, to stop it in real time. Um, we also have, through our advanced malware protection, um, you know, within 60 minutes of seeing the first samples, we were able to stop it as well. So really what I wanted to illustrate simply with this, um, with this infographic is just the power and the value of, of the threat intelligence that we do have and just how quickly we can respond. Um, you know, so at the end of the day, you know, our customers, uh, our security customers were left protected. And again, I just want to reinforce that this vulnerability with Microsoft Windows, you know, if you want to protect yourselves, you need to ensure the devices are fully patched. There's a security bulletin out for Microsoft. And then also to strongly consider blocking, you know, legacy protocols like SMB v1 inside the network and, and also, you know, potentially blocking TCP ports 139 and 445 from externally accessible hosts. Again, but to, to be clear, uh, you know, the NGFW certainly had up-to-date protections the very same day. Our malware protection, you know, again, within 60 minutes was able to stop. And then our cloud solutions, can, you know, were able to block the connections to the command and control servers actually out on the Internet, which resulted essentially in a triggering a kill switch for the malware. So you can start to see when I talked about the strategy of, of the network, cloud, and the endpoints working together, how that creates a force multiplier and protects our customers. Well, this is what that was designed to do. Now, what we've also done, uh, again, because ransomware uh, is essentially a pandemic when you really think about it with our customers today, is we've come out with a, a package solution to make it uh, easier for customers to prevent it, to detect it, to contain it, and then to respond to it. Again, not a silver bullet, not a guarantee, but a set of solutions that's prepackaged that allows you to, to stop it. Um, so, you know, ransomware itself uh, typically follows five steps. I mentioned a couple slides ago, right? It typically comes in either be a web-based infection or email. You know, from a web perspective, I think there's this big misconception out in the market that somehow the uh, people that are getting infected are doing bad things, and that's simply not the case. Uh, a lot of it comes through malvertising, which essentially um, is, you know, malicious code that's embedded inside trusted sites. As an example, you might go to an airline site to check on your travel, and, you know, part of that site may be embedded with malware. Um, so, again, you weren't doing anything improper, if you will, as a, as a user, but that doesn't mean that the malicious infrastructure wasn't downloaded. You know, the payload launched, the command and control servers launched, and then, of course, the files becoming inaccessible. Now, email is another big way and actually the largest vector for ransomware. And this has gotten very, very sophisticated. I mean, we see things like, you know, where the, the 
threat actors do a lot of research. They personalize the information. You might get an email internally from your CEO that's talking about you know, important communications relative to the earning, upcoming earnings announcements, et cetera. So again, this isn't a bunch of lazy or stupid users. Now, there's plenty of those, don't get me wrong. But in many instances, the, the attackers, as I mentioned, the sophistication have grown and grown greatly. So again, if we think about those pieces of network endpoint cloud, well, how do they really work together and how do they stop it? And what role would the firewall play in that as an example? And what I've just illustrated here for you that's building out is, and this would apply again, you know, for email and or web, is that we're able to essentially, you know, block the request, whether that's at the, you know, the DNS level out on the internet itself, uh, or, um, you know, uh, once it's brought into the environment, we also have email security, again, out in the cloud or on-prem where we stop it up front. Um, if the, um, if the uh, malware was actually um, able to get into the environment, uh, if somebody was essentially off net, if you think of it, brought it back into the enterprise, maybe it was a BOIOD device, et cetera, well, that's, again, where the NGFW can help. We can block that command and control communications back out uh, so that the malicious uh, code can't be executed. Same thing could be happened from a... Um, from a cloud perspective. And then if you think about it, the blue in the middle, let's say that something was really, really sophisticated and or, and or you didn't have any of the cloud security that I mentioned or Cisco's next generation firewall, but you happen to have you know, our advanced malware protection down at the endpoints. Again, we could still um, you know, understand what the files are supposed to do and then we can leverage the um, malware cloud that the uh, the AMP for endpoints actually talks back to. We can quarantine the files. We can block the files, et cetera. So again, I think this was just made to do a, a simple illustration uh, to show you the power of that integrated architecture, the power of our strategy, as well as the role that the NGFW plays uh, in helping customers to stop malware. And then the last thing I'll say about ransomware is, again, as I mentioned, we've put together these pre-ready sales bundles that are flexible. Uh, that you can get through partners like PCM uh, that allow for either basic or more advanced protection, both before, so, you know, before it enters the network, during, you know, if it did, was able to infiltrate the network through a variety of sources, how do we detect it, how do we contain it, including services prepackaged, as well as some additional options that you can layer in on top. So again, built with flexibility, prepackaged, ready to go, leverage the capability of the next generation firewall, as well as the rest of the industry-leading assets that make up the Cisco security portfolio. So with that, we're here to talk about uh, Cisco's next generation firewall, uh, the Cisco Firepower NGFW. So really, what, are we, what were we trying to solve with um, what we call the industry's first threat-focused next generation firewall? You know, the firewall has gone through an interesting evolution the last, you know, six to eight years, if you will, we went from a, what's called a ports-based or a stateful firewall that focused on protocols, uh, you know, ports, et cetera, to more of an application-focused uh, environment. And that was a really, really good thing. Um, so we added what's called application visibility control. But what we typically saw in the market is the majority of that protection was focused on the before part, which is certainly what you want to do, right? You want to try to prevent. But again, we just talked about the level of sophistication and, and the variants that are often unknown. So it's important to not only have before, but also during and after. Um, you know, and then if we're able to do that on a consolidated ba basis, that would be a benefit to customers. So when we designed our systems, we wanted to take the best of the, you know, what the stateful firewalls offer, the best of what the, um, the application visibility and control can do, um, provide for um, a lot more, do that on a consolidated method, do that on an automated method, and make it a lot easier for customers uh, to respond to this um, dynamic threat landscape that we spent a few minutes talking about before. So if we break down the Cisco NGFW into, into its piece parts, if you will, so it's a platform, a single product, if you will, uh, that has a number of different uh, piece parts and elements. Again, this is what we call the industry's first fully integrated threat-focused firewall. Essentially, at the end of the day, what this does is it takes the best of kind of all worlds, if you will. It takes the world's most widely deployed and trusted firewall, ASA. It combines that with the industry's leading next generation IPS, again, from our source fire heritage. 
And if any of you guys are security experts out there, you certainly will be familiar with SourceFire. Uh, we've added our advanced malware protection, uh, URL filtering, you know, SSL decryption, as well as proactive network profiling to determine those vulnerabilities that we talked uh, about just a few minutes ago when, when we reviewed ransomware, uh, as well as identity and, and control. And essentially, we put all of those elements together under a single operating system and a single uh, management layer, uh, again, to deliver what we call simple, open, automated, and effective security. So that's the, essentially a high-level schematic, if you will, of what the NGF firewall brings to the table. So what ultimately would that enable for customers uh, like yourselves? Well, really, I think it has five big benefits in going from left to right. Number one, stop more threats, right? That's both known and the newly emerging unknown threats. Second, gain more insight. You know, we're providing a deeper uh, understanding of your network with automation and prioritized response. And we'll talk about that in a minute, the type of analytics that we can deliver uh, for you uh, to save you uh, time and, and, and resources. The third, detect threats earlier and act faster. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Number four, reduce the complexity. When we talk about unified management and automation of many of the routine security tasks, ultimately what we're trying to do is save you time, uh, save you effort, and improve your ability and your responsiveness to the dynamic threat landscape while improving your agility. And then finally, uh, we're going to allow you to get more from your network. As I mentioned, um, you know, network integration is a key tenant of what we bring to the table at Cisco. And that's really important. As you, as you guys know, you know, we're by far the leading networking vendor in the industry. So there's a tremendous amount of value that we can unlock for our customers if we do that and do that well. But it's not just for Cisco. I want to be clear open as well. So we have a number of third-party integrations and a very, very open ecosystem. So uh, with that, um, you know, what is it that we sell today from an NGFW perspective? What markets do we serve? I've tried to summarize it. Nice, neat, one slide here for you. We have um, everything from the small and medium business uh, with our ASA 5500 series line. Again, you know, low cost of ownership, integrated threat defense, uh, you know, industry-leading capabilities there. Uh, we have the mid-range, uh, which is our traditional, again, the, the 5500X series, as well as the recently uh, released Firepower 2100 series. That brings some really unique capabilities uh, and incredible performance to the, the mid-range of the market, if you will. And then on the right is our enterprise and service provider segments, again, with our ASA line and or our Firepower 4100 series and 9300 series. Again, we're talking about you know, multi-service capability, flexible architecture, et cetera. And it's important to note, it's critical to note, that it's not just physical. It's physical and virtual solutions offered across the stack uh, for our customers. So I thought I would just cover uh, a couple of the newer additions, um, and starting with the Firepower 2100 series. This was a platform, again, that's positioned in the mid-range, that we announced at Cisco Live Berlin, and we got incredible uh, response from the industry, from our partners, and from our customers. And really, the headliner on, on this, uh, sent this platform is you know, being able to run um, you know, with security services turned on without having the typical um, degradation in performance. I'll, I'll have a chart in the next slide that will cover that. But, so what we're able to offer is three things. Number one, superior threat defense. Again, like I talked about previously, the industry-leading capability um, of the IPS, of the advanced malware, and the firewall all working together. And what that does for customers is it reduces the time to detection and increases their security efficacy or their effectiveness. And we offer this with an industry-leading form factor and number of interfaces. Secondly, sustain performance. Again, enable threat detection with minimal performance uh, impact. Again, we're talking deep threat visibility and correlation, uh, you know, up to 8.5 gigabits of throughput in one year form factor. Again, about 200% performance uh, at half the price. So again, very, very uh, attractive platform. Again, with very simplified management, we have quick wizards to get you up quickly, streamlined provisioning and automation, uh, and um, some new capability to ingest not only uh, Cisco's threat intelligence, but also third-party capability, third-party threat intelligence. I know many of our customers, especially in the financial services industries, often subscribe to a number of different threat 
feeds and threat intelligence sources. So we want to be able to aggregate those and have them work together uh, to help protect our customers. So as I mentioned, you know, one of the great calling cards, if you will, of the 2100 series is the performance. And what I've just done here is shown a very simplistic chart against you know, some of our largest competitors who at the moment all remain nameless here. But what we show is, is the throughput with the firewalling plus the application visibility control. And that's what the traditional NGFW had offered. As you can see, the performance as you go from left to right. Uh, but, but the real key to this solution, as I mentioned, is you can turn on threat capability, the deep inspection, et cetera, without any performance degradation. We've done this through this uh, specialized architecture, uh, which I'm not going to have time to go into today. But uh, point being is, is you see the, the benefits of that. Um, our competitors are still doing it the traditional way, um, and as a result, uh, you're going to see on average, a, you know, a 50 to a 40 to 50 percent uh, performance degradation. Um, so uh, again, what that does effectively is reduce the effective throughput. Um, so really, what we're able to offer is anywhere from, you know, you know, 100 to 200 percent uh, performance equivalent uh, at, at for a, a certain price point. So again, very very attractive offer, very attractive. Uh, um, offering orderable today, uh, so that's the great news. The, the next part I'll cover is the Cisco Firepower 4100 series. Again, this is also a 1RU platform uh, that's designed to provide um, performance and density optimization with both 10 and 40 gig interfaces, up to 80 gigs performance and a 1RU form factor at extremely low latency. But again, it's not just firewall performance we're talking about. Again, the key to threat protection is that multi-service capability. So again, turning on the application visibility and control, turning on the URL filtering, turning on the advanced malware protection, et cetera, et cetera. In addition, we can also offer third-party services, uh, for example, like Radware's Defense Pro distributed denial of service. Uh, and then finally, we offer that with the unified management as well. And then at the top end of the, uh, of the portfolio is uh, what we call the ultra-high segment is the Firepower 9300 series. Again, this is a modular chassis uh, where the first two were fixed configurations. Um, so it has uh, three different service modules that can be used to, uh, for either hardware acceleration and encryption as well as increased port density, um, both 10, 40, and 100 gigabits of, of throughput. And this is a platform um, that really, really shines at very, very high performance. So if you have very high performance needs, this is absolutely your platform. Again, it also is an open platform that runs third-party applications like um, distributed denial of service. Um, again, this has a, a been a very popular platform, as they all have. We're having tremendous success with our Firepower uh, appliance line uh, to date. And I just wanted to spend uh, one moment talking a little bit about the openness of the platform and specifically around distributed denial of service. You know, if I'd given this webinar probably six to nine months ago, um, if you remember, we had a tremendous amount of global distributed denial of service attacks. And we had some massive outages here in the United States as a result. Um, so what I wanted to, you know, to bring up is simply the fact that, you know, we offer an integrated uh, approach here. Uh, to it to where you can actually run um, at very low latency. Um, the distributed denial of service is just another um, service in addition to the others running on the platform. And, and really that has some pretty significant advantages. Um, you know, most people when they think about distributed denial of service, they may say, well, you know, I'm already paying for, quote, clean pipes or protection from my service provider. Well, the fact of the matter is that covers about 25% of the distributed denial of service attacks out there in the market today. And what Gardner, as well as, frankly, the entire industry recommends is adding inline uh, distributed denial of service protection, you know, uh, with your firewall to work in conjunction with the cloud, uh, to work in conjunction with uh, your service provider uh, managed service that you may have so that you can protect yourself, um, you know, across the board. Again, it's kind of that you know, 80-20 equation, or in this case, 75-25. Again, we're able to offer, because of the openness of the platform, again, very high performance, very low latency, but a full solution with full capability and protection. Okay, so 
that was a, uh, an overview of, of the platform, uh, you know, just what it is, um, what we offer in terms of the products and solutions. But, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning when I was talking about um, the, the different pieces that make up the NGFW, uh, you know, the Cisco ASA was the world's most widely deployed firewall, still being sold today and used by customers around the world. But I thought it would make sense just to spend a few moments uh, talking a little bit about some of the differences uh, as well as some of the terminology because it gets a little bit confusing. And again, the platforms that I showed previously, you know, the, the 4100 and the 9300 can run either the ASA image or the, the uh, FTD, which is the Firepower Threat Defense Image. Again, point here is simply to show on the left uh, what we've had and we continue to sell. So again, we offer you the ability to migrate at your own pace. We're not, there's no forced migration here like uh, with many of our competitors. So what I've just listed is some of the terminology on the left-hand side and just some of the terminology on the right-hand side. I've got a few slides to illustrate that. But what I really wanted to do here is just you know, let you know that we have both offerings still uh, so that customers can migrate at their own pace when and if they're ready. So when we talk about this converged software, when I mention that single uh, OS, if you will, what we've done is we've taken the, the, the best of the ASA combine that with the firepower services, which essentially is the threat capabilities, and put those together under a single OS. We have a flexible licensing model, so customers can consume um, you know, as much or as little as they, want, as they want when they're ready. Again, the base, um, the main packages are threat, which is the intrusion prevention, uh, you know, the DNS uh, sinkholing, uh, the security intelligence, et cetera. We've got a malware, which is the advanced malware protection, and the sandboxing as well as URL filtering. Again, simple, uh, flexible, uh, deploy as, as often and as, as quickly as you would like. This chart just simply shows a comparison um, of what's covered under what platforms. Again, many of our platforms support all the offerings. Uh, some support um, you know, either or uh, and both, as you can see here. So point being, a lot of flexibility, a lot of investment protection. I know many of you uh, have started with ASA, you're considering moving to uh, the firepower appliances, et cetera, or the virtualized appliances. Again, I just wanted to reinforce there's flexibility here. You can run it uh, in a mixed environment, um, et cetera, so lots of flexibility. Uh, what I thought I would do is just give you a, a quick uh, look from a management perspective. What I'm demonstrating here is the on-box capability. So if you're familiar with the uh, adaptive security device manager, what we call ASDM for the uh, ASA appliances. Well, that's uh, moved to the Firepower device manager, and we brought in additional capability uh, for consolidating management, enhanced controls, and, and a much more streamlined user interface, a very modern uh, web interface for the OnBox. Again, we still also offer uh, the centralized management and deployment capabilities. Uh, again, from the Firesight Manager, which is morphed into the Firepower Management Center. Again, same great functionality with the unified insight, et cetera, but we've added additional integrations. As I mentioned, Cisco's very focused on both best-of-breed products as well as network integration. So we've integrated the, the capabilities from our sandboxing, which is the threat grid, our identity services engine, which is the policy engine uh, for both security as well as the reach back into the networking, the enterprise networking side and of course our AMP for endpoints. So again, centralized deployment um, at scale, single interface, et cetera. And, and what I wanted to, to demonstrate here is, uh, and, and make sure that I didn't confuse anyone, is we have a flexible, license, uh, flexible management offer. So whether you want to manage your device uh, on box, uh, maybe you're a small uh, environment, you only have a small number of devices, well, we offer that, it comes with the solution, it's the Firepower Device Manager. Uh, for centralized deployments, the Firepower Management Center, again, single insight for all of the capabilities that I showed uh, at the beginning when I demonstrated what uh, was included with the NGFW or what it, it contained. And then finally, we also have cloud-based policy orchestration through our Cisco Defense Orchestrator that provides a simple interface, very efficient manager uh, management, very streamlined for those customers that are looking towards and comfortable with a cloud-based policy management and orchestration approach. So again, lots of flexibility depending on uh, you know, what makes sense for you and when it makes sense for you. 
So ultimately what we're doing is we're, we're unifying the approach, providing more and improved uh, capabilities through a very intuitive interface. Uh, and then ultimately, as I wrap up the, the comparison on the ASA versus the firepower, I just wanted to show graphically for you here is that, uh, again, we offer a lot of migration options that you as customers can choose to either take advantage of or not um, at the time that makes sense for you. So whether I have an ASA 5500X platform, um, you know, we've got, uh, as you might imagine, uh, new offerings uh, that have increased performance, et cetera. You can enhance that capability with FTD, uh, you know, with the existing platform. Um, in the middle, uh, we can, uh, you may decide to take advantage of that Firepower 2100 series with the industry-leading price performance that I showed you a few slides ago. Again, that comes preloaded with the FTD if that's how you'd like to use it. And then finally, the 4100 series. We know how we have a very large install base of the 5585X. And, and again, you have the capability and the opportunity to upgrade to the 4100 platforms preloaded with FTD as well. So lots of flexibility, lots of investment protection, just as you would expect from Cisco. Now, what are the differentiators? I mean, this is really kind of where the, 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 the meat of the presentation comes in the next couple uh, of slides which is threat efficacy, visibility and context, and integration and automation. And oh yeah, we make it simple too. So threat intelligence, I covered that just a minute ago, but I just wanted to show you um, the breadth and depth. As I mentioned, typically 10 to 100 times what our competitors offer. We're blocking close to 20 billion threats a day. I mean, based on the number of people in the world, that's over three blocked threats per day for every single person in the world. Just wanted to let that sink in. Again, no one else can touch this. This is a very significant advantage for Cisco um, moving forward. And again, the next slide here simply shows some additional um, stats that reinforce what I'm saying. Again, 20 billion threats blocked per day, 16 billion web requests, you know, 600 billion daily emails. Again, all of this data, all of this telemetry, et cetera, is shared across the platforms to keep our customers more protected quicker and faster. Talos is also sharing a lot of this uh, data and information with the industry itself uh, to help make the internet safer itself. So it's not just Cisco customers. There's a bigger uh, thing at play here, which is you know, keeping the internet itself safe as well. And then from a visibility and control, the second big differentiator, I just wanted to build this out for you. Again, the typical IPS uh, had been very threat focused. When we look at the typical NGFW, that's where we've added the user, uh, the user, uh, excuse me, the application visibility control. But with Cisco, and this is really important for all of those out there that have limited staffs, or many of you are having to do both network and security uh, uh, duties at the same time, the Cisco Firepower NGFW actually has the ability to go out and passively profile the network to determine what type of vulnerabilities you have across your servers, your routers, your switches, what type of operating systems you're running, the client applications, the mobile devices, et cetera. And really what this allows us to do is be able to kind of tune out the noise, if you will. So the things that may really be um, you know, high impact security alerts, if they're not applicable in your environment, we can de-escalate those. We can also help you to custom and auto-tune your signatures so again, reduce that noise in the system by up to 90%. So again, this is a lot about doing a lot, doing more with less. And if you do have a lot more, you have a large staff, well, this is essentially freeing up resources uh, to take on those high value projects versus you know, chasing your tail, so to speak, on an ongoing basis. So again, we've aggregated all of that intelligence uh, in a single interface. Again, network to endpoint visibility, very, very important with automation for impact assessment, rule recommendations, and remediation. Uh, again, pulling in that rich contextual awareness. I covered our strategy, network, endpoint, and cloud. You can see at the top bar here, just the large amount of sources that we can take in information. Combine that with our Talos threat intelligence, pushing that down into a single uh, management interface for consistent policy and enforcement. This is where we talked about when we talk about integrated threat defense. And really the results speak for themselves. Uh, you know, the industry um, you know, has, as I mentioned, over 100 days um, you know, mean time to detection for an unknown threat. 
at Cisco, we're down to about six hours. Uh, you know, when you look at the third-party data, uh, you know, like from NSS Labs, et cetera, on the breach detection, uh, you know, we have significant advantage there. You know, we certainly showed 100% breach detection, you know, uh, you know in, in, in a much faster time. And really, when you, when you look at it, uh, you know, when we were at, you know, a five-minute period in those tests, we had, you know, 10x the performance, uh, 10x improvement relative to our competitors. So, again, it's very tangible results as a result from our security um, architecture. Now, automation, as I mentioned, um, what we also help you do, because we pull in all of this type of data, is we help you automatically do the threat correlation, which reduces the, the noise in the system that I mentioned. Uh, we also help with automated tuning. We can help adjust the policies automatically, or we can notify you of what we would adjust them to, and then you can push them out um, as appropriate given your change windows and environment. And then, of course, we have open app ID to help profile um, applications that are unknown. So again, what are we doing to help that? As I mentioned, this is just an illustration. We help determine what's important, what's not uh, within your environment so that we can reduce the amount of noise to help you so that you're not part of the 54% that I showed on, I think, the second slide of the presentation that are unable to respond. This gives a, a graphical illustration of how we take multiple events and correlate them together on your behalf automatically. So we can take IPS events, things like malware, backdoors, exploit kits, you know, those CNC connections that I covered in the ransomware, combine that with our security intelligence and the actual malware events that we're seeing down at the endpoints, combine those together, link all of those, uh, um, all of those together so that we know and can provide the intelligence for you to quickly respond, again, allowing you to connect the dots. I, mean, it's, I, I sometimes jokingly say it's almost like having a, an army of security professionals that, that at your behalf here. And then ultimately what we're doing is streamlining operations. We're recommending rules to improve your defenses. We're helping you to automatically tune the environment based on what makes sense in your specific environment, based on the vulnerabilities in your environment. Uh, very, very powerful automation application capabilities. And then finally, from a, uh, an openness perspective, we also allow you to do self-service for customized application detectors uh, we do this in a, a, an open source environment as well. So we're hoping to do for um, application visibility and control what we did for IPS with the SNORT, uh, which eventually became SourceFire and is rolled into the industry's leading next generation IPS. So again, incredible capability here uh, that's offered for you. And this isn't something you have to wait on from Cisco. So ultimately what we're talking about is, you know, is for automation and analytics to become that force multiplier on your behalf allowing you to see once and protect everywhere. I just wanted to give a couple of examples, uh, real tangible examples of all, all this comes together. Uh, then what I'll do is stop. We can open it up for Q&A. Uh, so I think I'll do that next. So as I mentioned, is automation orchestration, malware, it's one of the, again, most persistent threats uh, out there today. Um, you know, essentially what we're able to do is, is, is able to look at and do continuous analysis. So, you know, essentially recording everything that happens within the network. Think of this as like a video recorder that constantly records and gives you the ability to rewind, to fast forward, to see where a file has been, where it's going, what it's doing. There's some fancy names like retrospection and behavioral incidents of compromise, but that's the, the plain English version. Uh, and then what we're able to do is, is you know, stop the malware. Uh, again, if, even if we see unknown things, we have the ability to trigger our sandboxes, et cetera, and because we know what, you know, the files are doing not only today, but, you know, what they've done previously, and we're able to correlate that across the network. We have the industry's leading, you know, essentially breach detection that we're able to offer. But we don't just keep it there. So if we see it in one part of the network, we have the ability to communicate with the rest of your network. So if we see something on an email vector, we have the ability to, you know, uh, push that protection out into a branch firewall, as an example. Uh, you know, so again, that protection is pervasive in what we call our AMP Everywhere, our Advanced Malware Protection Everywhere capability. And then ultimately, what this analytics allows us to do is answer the questions for you of who, what, when, where, and how. Who? Focus on these specific users first. What? 
you know, which applications are being affected when this is the scope of the exposure over time where the breach has impacted these specific areas and then how. Here's the origin and the progression of the threat. As I mentioned on some of the previous slides under the, the management component is we're able to take network and endpoint correlation across the entire spectrum to help you answer the question of who, what, when, where, and how so that you can respond quickly. A final tangible example from a network automation and orchestration perspective is what I've shown here. And this is where we're actually taking multiple security technologies and sharing those through a, a, you know, a common interface, which is PX Grid. So both Cisco and non-Cisco, we're taking things in like from the security information and event management systems, the firewalls, the custom act, app detectors, et cetera, communicating with the network to contain attacks manually or automatically, depending on how you have your security policies set up, and then dynamically able to, we're able to dynamically restrict access and permissions so that we're able to actually stop those threats. So if you think about what we're able to do here is we're taking security intelligence from a variety of different sources, both Cisco and non-Cisco. We're communicating with the network and actually using it as an enforcer, and then ultimately we're able to stop threats. Again, this is either automatic if you set it up that way and your policies allow it, or initiated by an IT admin. Again, all of this happens in a matter of seconds. And this is what we call rapid threat containment in action. And uh, you know, with that, um, what I would like to do now is open the floor up uh, for any questions uh, that you may have. Great. Thank you, John. We still have about 12 minutes. Uh, yep. remaining for the Q&A. Again, if you have any questions that you have not yet shared, please go ahead and enter them now in the question box. The first question uh, for you, John, is can Cisco's NGFW, uh, next generation firewall, help stop mal uh, ransomware? Well, I certainly hope so, given I covered uh, six or eight slides that I'm um, just uh, being a little flippant there. I mean, the fact of the matter is yes, and, and that's a very important question. It's one of the pieces uh, to the puzzle, if you will. Um, you know, one of the things is that the NGFW has up-to-date rules that allow you to detect and block that malicious activity. Now, it also gets, as I, as I showed, it gets real-time threat intelligence um, from, you know, Talos, which is our threat intelligence organization, as well as our cloud solution, as well as our uh, advanced malware protection solutions down on the endpoints. So again, all of those can work together in concert, if you will, uh, and that's really important given the level of sophistication these days with the ransomware, which is just a you know a type of, of malware. So hopefully the illustrations that I've uh, shown help address that question. Uh, if not, or maybe you joined late, then hopefully the verbal response here uh, would address that for you. What's the next question? Thank you. Uh, do endpoints need to run an agent? Do endpoints need to, can you expand on that? Okay. Uh, actually, if it's okay, if you can type your question in again. In the meanwhile, we can have the sure. other question. Uh, uh, what are the key differentiators, if you can list down, for Cisco's new generation firewall versus the competition? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, if I had to bucket them in three big areas, I think it's threat efficacy and intelligence. Uh, and again, that's not just me saying it. Um, I think I've clearly you know, articulated though that, you know, the, the difference in the, the threat intelligence itself. But if you look at a lot of the third party testing, that's really, really where we shine. And when you think about the next generation firewall and the elements that make up that, and you have the industry's leading next generation intrusion prevention system, you know, from the source fire heritage, you've got the industry's leading advanced malware, you know, working with the most widely deployed firewall solution, and that's all combined into one. So the first thing is threat efficacy and intelligence. The second is that visibility and control. Very important, you know, it's hard to you know, protect what you can't see. Uh, so we not only um, have the widest set of visibility, again, you know, from the network and the cloud elsewhere, but that again, we're, we're proactively, um, you know, looking at the network uh, so that we can determine what the specific vulnerabilities for you are. But we don't stop there, right? I, I think, I hope I've shown you that we also give you the controls to leverage that network and use it as, as part of the enforcer. And then the third big area is the integration and the automation. 
again, it's one thing to give you all of the data that you need, but it's, it's another to be able to have the intelligence uh, to provide quick and easy remediation. So three things, threat intelligence and efficacy. Number two, the second is visibility and control, and the third is that integration and automation. Thank you, John. Uh, there are a couple of questions by Tony. Uh, I'll read out the first one. What are the major software features between Cisco New Generation Firewall or FTD to Palo Alto's New Generation Firewall? Oh, sure. Yeah, and, and it's a great question. Um, you know, and Palo Alto has uh, been in the next generation firewall space for a, a number of years and, frankly, one of our largest competitors, the largest in North America, certainly, uh, which is where I'm based. Uh, you know, they have a lot in common, um, you know, from a features and functionality perspective, especially on the, on the firewalling side. I think where you get the real differences is when it comes to the threat uh, capability and threat efficacy. Uh, you know, from Gartner's definition of an NGFW, uh, or excuse me, an NGIPS, the Next Generation Intrusion Prevention System, that's certainly uh, where Cisco shines. I think the other part is the um, the other big difference in, in the software is that is that network profiling uh, and advanced malware protection. Um, now, to be fair, you know, uh, they do have some of that capability, but again, it's not as rich. Uh, and, and frankly, you know, if you believe the third-party studies. Uh, you know, we have offer significant um, threat efficacy advantages uh, over what a Palo Alto uh, can offer. Thank you, John. And the next part of the question from Tony is, can Cisco's uh, new next generation firewall work in conjunction with current next generation firewalls like Palo Alto networks, or is it a replacement technology? No, and it's a good question, Tony. And um, no, you can run in a mixed environment, and many customers do so. Um, you know, both you know with Palo Alto and Cisco, or other vendors and Cisco. Um, you know, you certainly can do that. Uh, ultimately, what you end up with is is two um, essentially management interfaces, or you know, depending on what you're running from Palo Alto, you know, you may have as much as six or seven. Again, depending on you know if you've deployed the full solution. So you can run them together. Uh, many of our customers do, uh, but you lose some of the, the the advantage of that consolidation that I mentioned, um, as well as that single pane of glass, if you will. Uh, but you certainly could, you know, if you're a Palo Alto customer today, as an example, you could introduce um, the Cisco threat appliances. Often, uh, the way that we do that is customers will ask us, uh, you know, to essentially put it behind a competitor's firewall initially. Uh, because of um, you know the the threat efficacy and some of the the threat capability advantages that we have, and kind of run them in conjunction, um, but you know that's probably the most common uh, way that at least we're asked to do that. The other common way is I may have uh, a certain vendor in one part of the network, you know maybe in the data center or the network edge, and they want another vendor in another part of the network, uh, or they're making a transition, but the um, you know the, the the equipment's not depreciated yet, et cetera. That's a very that's another very common way to do it is kind of segment or place in the network by place in the network, or simply with a, you know a Cisco um, threat appliance if you want to brand it that way, sitting behind a, another vendor's firewall. It's very very common. Good question. Thank, Thank you. John. Uh, yep. Uh, the last question I can see in the question box is: Does Cisco's new generation firewall? available in a virtual version that supports AWS? Yeah, so uh, the answer is yes. Uh, we support AWS uh, Azure as well, if you're uh, in Azure. Uh, we offer, as I mentioned, our platforms in a, a variety of different manners. Virtual is one. So if you want to de deploy it as a virtual NGFW, we offer that. If you wanted to deploy it as a virtual ASA, again, that stateful firewall, without all those threat capabilities, we offer that. We also offer um, in a virtualized environment, um, you know, the virtual NGIPS. So if you want to deploy it as an intrusion prevention or a next gen intrusion prevention device, so there's a, a variety of different capabilities um, for those customers uh, in public environments or hybrid environments or both. A uh, person is asking: We have a limited staff to support both the network and our security operations. How can Cisco's new generation firewall help us? Well, that's a, that's a good question. That's a very good one, and, and certainly a challenge for many, many customers today that are asked to do a whole lot more with, with less. 
um, you know, especially when you consider how just how rapidly expanding the threat landscape is and just how sophisticated the attacks have become, uh, like I mentioned with the ransomware is a perfect example. You know, I think one of the, the biggest ways is, is through, that, um, through that intelligence and that automation, the ability to profile the network um, and determine, you know, what the specific vulnerabilities are and then being able to kind of escalate and de-escalate, um, you know, based on what's, you know, whether that threat is legitimate or not in, in your environment. And then I think the other really big part is, is the ability to use and to tie in you know, again, through, you know, whatever policies you've set up as a customer to, to be able to tie in that network itself and be able to quarantine uh, as needed or, frankly, block, you know, depending on what your policies allow. So, you know, that really is something that's not simple to do if you think about, you know, multiple technologies, multiple products, uh, you know, in and of itself. So I think that's where those analytics and that automation that I mentioned come into play. Uh, and believe me, I fully understand the, the predicament that you guys are in, and that's one of the big values that we bring as a company. Again, not just with the firewall, but as we take in all of the elements that make up a security, you know, infrastructure, both our own and, and then through, you know, our openness, um, you know, the PX Grid was an example I gave for the rapid direct containment. Thank you so much, John. So these are the, these, the time. Yeah. These are all the questions I have uh, in the question box. So. Uh, thank you so much for giving us a great presentation and thank you all for joining in us today. If you still have any questions after the webinar, please email us at webinars at pcm.com and I will send it off to John. Uh, yes, to have very good. For you. I appreciate everybody joining. Again, for more information, you can go to www.cisco.com slash go slash NGFW, real simple. Or if you want to take the next step and learn more, uh, get a system in play, please contact uh, PCM. Uh, you know, they're a great partner and, and, and we'll be happy to field your request. I uh, wanted to thank everybody for the time today. I really appreciate it. Cool.